We need to hear that more often. Yes. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Yes. One day, one day, it is my desire that when it is communion Sabbath, this sanctuary will be full. It is a terrible, terrible mistake when people miss church on Communion Sabbath. That's the one that you should go and never miss. And so I, want, I would like this morning to reflect on the relationship between Jesus and his disciples. Because today we are going to deal between our relationship through communion service between God. So let's begin with a word of prayer. Father in heaven, Lord, we just ask for your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 I would like for us, if we would, could turn meanwhile to our scripture reading there in Matthew 26, 56. I want to thank Ricky and his son for that reading. Matthew 26, 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Talking about the betraying of Jesus. And then, this, one of the saddest verses. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. And fled. There are going to be people in heaven... Listen up, church. There are going to be people, where? Yeah. In heaven. That will not be there. Let me, let me rephrase that. There will be people who will miss out heaven. Who will miss out of heaven. Not because of the Sabbath. Not because of doctrines, not because of keeping the Sabbath or not keeping the Sabbath, but they will miss it out because of people, because of someone else. Satan has discovered that if he wants to get us, he can get us with other people. He can get to us through other people. It's another human being. Because people can get to people. And some of us know how even to get to each other. We know what tone to use, what gestures to do, or what to say that it may cut to the other person. And the other person may get discouraged and leave the church and never come back only due to somebody else. Not because they don't believe in the, teaching, in the teachings of the church. No but because of somebody else. Because of, of somebody else. And sometimes relationships are broken, are broken because of that. So before we partake in the Lord's Supper, before we partake in this, in this table here, I want us to pause for one minute. Pause for one minute. I can look at the clock. And for that, during that one minute, I want us to think on a relationship. To think on a relationship that has been hurt or broken or damaged because of our tongues. Or maybe because of their tongues. And how you regret that that relationship is broken. On how you regret that if you could go back in time, maybe you would have never said that. I want us to, to, to take one minute, okay, and just concentrate and think on a relationship that was broken or is broken due to our tongue or anything that we could have done and that we regret, that we regret it is the way it is now. So let's begin now. Let's just think on that.
Do you have any regrets in your mind at this time? And the reason why I did this little exercise, friends, the number one things that people leave the church is due because of somebody else. It's due because a relationship was broken. A, a, a relationship that there was trust and something happened and now it's broken and now they don't just leave the person, they leave the church and they leave the church in general. Rarely, rare, does a person leave due to doctrinal issues. But it's mostly because of relationship issues. You see, the Bible has many texts to describe the relationship between, between Jesus and his disciples. Lots of Bible texts. But what about the passages that describe how the disciples treated Jesus? You see, the Bible tells us how Jesus treated others and how he treats you and me. But how about the passages where the disciples treated Jesus? So there, if you join with me in Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 4, verse 38, we're going to see just a couple of them. We're going to see if we're not in the same situation as the disciples. The way the disciples treated Jesus was shameful. Luke chapter 4, verse 38. Here, Peter's mother-in-law is sick. And what do people do if Jesus is close by when somebody who is sick? They take Jesus. Now he rose, arose from the synagogue and, and entered Simon's house. But Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever. And they made request of him, talking about Jesus, concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever and it left her. And then what does the Bible say after that? And immediately she arose and what? And served them. It's interesting. She immediately rose and served them. I wonder why I said immediately. Yeah, I'm, just, I'm just curious that, that the disciples and maybe even Peter were there hungry. Well, you know, my mother-in-law is sick. Well, we can take care of that. Jesus is right here. Jesus, we have a problem. We're kind of hungry. Can you fix this? He heals her. And what does she do? Immediately, okay, I'll get you guys something else to eat. For them, Jesus was a pharmacy. Just, 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 just fix the, the fever. Fix the fever. Look at Matthew chapter 17. Matthew chapter 17. Here the disciples are trying to do a miracle in verse 14. And they cannot do it. It says, And when they came to the multitude, a man came to him kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is an epileptic and suffers severely, for he often falls into the fire and often into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said to him, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and it came out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then the disciples came to Jesus privately, and what they asked him? Why couldn't we do it? Why couldn't we do it? Maybe instead of saying, thank you, Lord, or, or, why couldn't we do it? And what did Jesus answer them? Because of your unbelief, for as surely I say to you, if you have faith as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible for you. Why couldn't we do it? And Jesus says, because of your unbelief. 
You see, they saw Jesus as a source for their satisfaction. Not as a source of submission, but as a, as a source of their satisfaction. How come we couldn't do it? Really, another one there in Luke 22. This one is, is even embarrassing. In Luke 22, they are at the Lord's Supper, just like how you are right now. Luke 22, verse 24. And the Lord's Supper, it, it has two functions. We reconcile with our neighbors and we reconcile with God. In Luke 22, verse 24, it says, Now there was also a dispute among them, talking about the disciples, as to which of them should be considered the greatest. At communion, at the Lord's Supper, after Jesus washed their feet, they're discussing who is the greatest. Who is the greatest? John 6, John 6, 24. John 6, 24. Jesus had healed, no, I'm sorry, Jesus had, had fed the 5,000. And he goes with his disciples and the people see that he leaves in John 6, 24 through 27. It says, when the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, nor his disciples, they also got into a boat and came to Capernaum seeking Jesus. Okay, they were seeking Jesus. Verse 25, And when they found him on the other side, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? That's kind of a little bit odd. They're seeking him. They go out where they know he's going to be, and then they act surprised. Rabbi, when did you get here? And Jesus, reading and knowing their thoughts, of why they were looking for him. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly I say to you, you seek me not because you saw the signs, but because you ate of the loaves, the previous, and were filled. Jesus calls him out. You're only looking for me because you want another buffet. You're only looking for me because you want another free meal. They were looking for Jesus. How did they treat Jesus? They treated him like a food stamp card. That's, a, that's the reality. They got fed the first time. Like, that was so great. Where is he? I don't know. He's not here. Well, let's go look for him. We want another. They were looking for him. How did they treat him? Not because they wanted to learn about the Father. Not because they wanted repentance. Not because they wanted to get closer in their walk with God but because they want another free meal and Jesus called them out and, and that's why he said do not labor for the food which perishes but for the food which endures to everlasting life which is which the son of man will give you because God the father has sent has set his seal upon him most of us most of us use people to get what we want People are a means of which we get something for ourselves. Something for ourselves. And that goes contrary to what this table represents. It goes contrary to what this table represents. If you join me there in Matthew chapter 19, Matthew chapter 19, we can see this in a perfect clear example. Matthew chapter 19, Jesus counsels the rich young ruler. The rich young ruler comes and says, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus tells him what he needs to do. But we know the sad story that the rich guy leaves because he doesn't want to give up his goods and funds. And so then there in Matthew 19, verse 27, Peter, he's there. He, he, he kind of knows what just happened. And what does he tell Jesus there in verse 27? Then Peter answered and said to him, to Jesus, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? 
What, are they, what is Peter here using Jesus for? He wants a reward. He just saw that the rich and ruler didn't give up anything. And Peter, being a fisherman, said, Lord, see, I, don't, I got no more boat. I left everything. What's in it for me? What's in it for me? So often in relationships, we give in order to get. We give in order to get. You may be able to fool me, but you can't fool the Holy Spirit. You can't fool the Holy Spirit. We're nice, we give, but we want it back. Few people, few people sitting here today are willing to be nice and give to someone who may be not nice to you. I know there are some, there are few. But most of our mentality is, you kiss me, I kiss you back. You kick me, <laughs> I kick you back. It's contrary to what this table represents. It's contrary to what this table represents. There in Matthew chapter 26, Jesus is praying for his disciples. Matthew 26. Jesus prayed more for his disciples than he prayed for himself. Matthew 26, verse 40. It says, Then he came to his disciples and found them sleeping and said to Peter, What? And there's an exclamation. This is really an understatement. You know, in the Greek, it's really emphasized. It's really emphasized. More like, What on earth are you doing? What? Could you not watch with me how long? One hour? Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Jesus is praying for the power to save them from sin. To save them from sin. And they could not just pray with him for just one hour. And I'm sure that after Jesus left and was crucified, they thought back and regretted that moment that they did not stay awake with Jesus. Once Jesus was gone, I'm sure they regretted lots of things. But especially this situation that they regretted. They could not stay with him for one hour. Church, every Sabbath morning, God is wanting to talk to you through his word. Can we give him at least one hour? Can we give him one hour? Does the Holy Spirit have to say, can't you stay off your phone just one hour? Can't you just stop texting for one hour, looking at Facebook for one hour? You see, you see the devil knows that the Holy Spirit talks through our minds. And so he gets us entertained with our gadgets because if our concentration is somewhere else the Holy Spirit has a harder time to convey the message that he wants to give you and I'm sure they regretted they regretted that moment and that's why here at our scripture reading in, in Matthew 26 56 then all the disciples forsook him and fled you think after Jesus left, they regretted that? No. Have you ever forsaken God and regretted it? It would be a terrible thing, friends, for you to end up on the wrong side of the wall in the holy city. That would be your biggest regret of your life. To end up on the wrong side of the wall in the holy city when it comes down after the, after the thousand years. People are going to be in the city. People are going to be out of the city. In the earth. If only. If only. 
you had treated your Savior as your Savior. Not as a meal ticket, not as a path to success, not as your doctor or pharmacist, not as a God who gives you what you want, but as your Savior. As your Savior. If only we had treated our Savior as our Savior. There are going to be lots of regrets, friends. Lots of regrets. You see, there is nothing wrong with providing a good meal. Absolutely. Some people come to church. Praise the Lord for the ministry in this church of the fellowship lunch that the ladies do. Every single week. Except for communion Sabbath. But every single week. And some just come for the meal. You know who you are. Some of them aren't even here yet because it's not meal time yet. There is nothing wrong with providing a good meal, but it, is, it should be a means, and it is a means, because I know that they pray with people. A means to bring people to a relationship with God. The wonderful clinic that we hear that provides service to thousands of people should be a means to lead people. Just as, Jesus, just as Jesus says, I have food of everlasting life. The wonderful school that we have here, praise the Lord for the, our school. It is a means of bringing people to Jesus. It's not just to educate our kids in mathematics. They can get that anywhere. But leading them to the foot of the cross, they can get that here. They can get that here. See, there's going to come a time in the time of trouble when there will not be a Cleburne First Church. In the time of trouble, this place will not be available. And you are going to regret not coming or not, the, not coming to communion service. You're going to regret all the times that you should have gone to church, but you didn't. You could have gone to prayer meeting, but you didn't. You're going to regret not coming to Sabbath school. I want to just share with you here from Acts of the Apostles, page 36, the disciples regret. Because today, friends, today God is offering us a day of no regret. But Acts of the Apostles, page 36, as the disciples waited for the fulfillment of the promise, they humbled their hearts in true repentance and confessed their unbelief as they called to remember the words that Christ had spoken to them before his death they understood more fully their meaning they re they reproached themselves for their misapprehension of the savior notice for their not somebody else's for their own misapprehension of the savior as they meditated upon his pure holy life they felt that no toil would be too hard no sacrifice too great if only they could bear witness in their lives of the loveliness of christ's character and then here oh if they could but have the past three years to live over they thought how differently they would act. If they could only see their, the master again, how earnestly they would strive to show him deep, to show him how deeply they loved him and how sincerely they sorrowed for having ever grieved him by a word or an act of unbelief. The disciples regretted after Jesus was gone on how they treated him, how they took him for granted, how they used him. Oh, we're hungry. Oh, our, you know, the, the Lord will take care of that. Somebody is sick. The Lord will take care of that. Somebody is dead. The, the Lord will take care of that. They regretted on just using him. Oh, if they could but have the past three years to live over. For three years, the disciples seldom showed their love for Jesus. Read the Gospels. 
Read the Gospels. You will rarely see their love to Jesus. And today as we partake in this communion service, the communion service serves two parts. The first part is the ordinance of humility. And that part deals with our regrets between human beings, between each other. Our, reg our regrets that, man, I shouldn't have talked to her like that. I need to go and apologize. I need to make this right. Or I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have texted that. I shouldn't have posted that. I shouldn't have called her that name or him. The, the ordinance of humility deals with our restoration, our regrets as human beings, and fixing that. The Lord's Supper allows us to deal with our regrets with Jesus. Any time that we took him for granted. How many times you've been out in the metroplex, you come home safe at home. Safe. Anytime you're driving Dallas and you come home safe, praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. I even praise and pray for the construction workers that are out there working, exposed to all that danger and traffic. We take the Lord for granted. We've been good, not sick all year long, maybe never even gotten the flu. And we just take it for granted. The ordinance of humility deals with our regrets with each other. And the Lord's Supper allows us to repent and deal with our regrets with Jesus. So I just want to appeal to you, church. How does Jesus deal with our regrets? He tells us there in 1 John 1, 9. If you confess your sins, I am faithful and just to forgive them and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. He is faithful, friends. He is faithful. He holds no grudges. The Lord holds no grudges. Jesus, in dealing with us, never lets himself get tied up in regrets. Amen. 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 And don't let the devil do that to you. As long as there is breath in your life, friends, and there is breath right now because you're here. As long as there is breath in your life, you can make peace with God and with others. The dumbest thing you can do is hold on to your pride. That is the dumbest thing you can do. I won't use another word because I know I'm at church. Pride, friends, will take you to the lake of fire. That's where, it, that's where it is taking Lucifer. And it will take you if you hold on to pride. We need to let go. If there's anything that we need to restore with our brothers, our neighbors, our families, our friends, do it, friends. Eternal damnation is not worth it. Let it go. Crawl on your knees if necessary. Some of us may be thinking, if only I had listened to God earlier. If only I had done what is right earlier, I regret it. Well, right now is your opportunity to have no regrets and repent and turn to God and begin to follow Him in His will. In His will. Today, God is offering you no regrets. That would you leave today, you don't regret coming. You don't regret it. Eat the bread, drink the juice, and this will be one day, friends, that you will not regret. This will be one day that you will not regret. And you, you give your life to God. That you reconcile anything that needs to be reconciled with others. You may be thinking, it's too hard, it's impossible. Nothing is impossible. Nothing. I have seen family members that haven't spoken for years reconcile because somebody put their pride aside and humbled themselves. And Jesus humbled himself on the cross, naked, naked, 
You see, when we see the, the paintings of Jesus, you know, his privates are covered, but Jesus was naked, exposed, humbled for you and for me. And he didn't regret it. God has salvation for you, friends. It is so much that he has for you. So reconcile. A relationship with somebody else is not worth losing your salvation. It is not. Reconcile what, what you can. Reconcile with the Lord. He will forgive you and cleanse your heart. And so now as I close with a word of prayer, friends, I invite you to close your eyes and pray with me. Father in heaven, Lord, forgive us, forgive me if ever I have treated you maybe as your disciples have treated you. They did regret it once you were gone. They repented. And Lord, we are here if we, regretting whenever we have taken you for granted. You have washed over us. You have taken care of us. You have blessed us. You have healed us. You have delivered us. You have saved us. And Lord, thank you. Thank you. Forgive us in anything that we have done to displease you. And help us to forgive others if we have displeased others. And if there's any reconciliation, healing that we need to do, Lord, please help us to do it and to put our pride away. And that we may reconcile with you and be at peace with you and with others. Bless us now as we partake in this, your communion service. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will be dismissed to participate in the ordinance of foot washing. It will be in the Family Life Center. So you are welcome to join us. <laughs>